Hello, welcome back to my conspiracy theory session on my channel, I am your content creator Hasike. Here are the top 10 conspiracy theories in brief details about the origin of coronavirus, COVID-19, making the rounds. Number 1. Objective the New World Order. NWO in conspiracy theories initiated by the Illuminati and the Freemasonry with the aim of a secretly emerging totalitarian world government. The are three main goals are. Number 1. One world government number 2. One world religion number 3. One world currency. To achieve the above, these secret societies believe the world population is too much at 7 billion and the earth resource would soon be extinct in the next few years because of the population growth and they plan to reduce the world population by 3 billion by 2050. From different conspiracy theories, these secret societies have tried several times to reduce the world population by creating HIV, AIDS made to reduce the black population, bird flu, which is caused by chemtrails etc. What better, faster and more efficient way could they achieve their population reduction scheme than creating a deadly virus? However there's no candid proof that links the pandemic to the New World Order scheme. Number 2. 5G Technology. 5G is the fifth generation of wireless technologies used to communicate between different mobile devices. It is supposed to be much faster and allows for more devices to be used at the same time. Did 5G cause the coronavirus COVID-19? In early January, there were several websites posting about the 5G high-frequency radio waves weakening the human immune system and causing the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak to occur in Wuhan. There have also been claims that the 5G higher frequency millimeter waves helped mutate the SARS virus into COVID-19. Wuhan was one of the first places in China to roll out 5G. However, other large Chinese cities like Beijing, Shanghai and Guangzhou also had the same technology rolled out at the time the coronavirus outbreak occurred. There are several studies that suggest prolonged exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic fields could increase the risk for cells to be damaged, a possible cause of cancer. However, the findings of these studies are not unique to 5G but also applicable to 4G, 3G, and other forms of wireless communications like the Wi-Fi in your home. In 2011, the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer IARC, published a paper indicating this risk to the public. The studies mentioned above are neither conclusive nor deny that 5G is dangerous, but that all wireless communication technologies could be harmful in a higher dose. 5G is only more harmful because it operates on a higher frequency compared to previously deployed technologies like 4G or 3G. It's worth repeating, as the World Health Organization WHO, points out, that viruses cannot travel on mobile networks, and that COVID-19 is spreading rapidly in many countries that do not have 5G networks. Even so, this conspiracy theory, after being spread by celebrities with big social media followings, has led to cell phone towers being set on fire in the UK and elsewhere. Number 3. Bill Gates is the perpetrator. Most conspiracy theories, like the viruses they resemble, constantly mutate and have several variants circulating at any one time. Many of these plots and subplots seem to involve Bill Gates, who became a new target of disinformation after gently criticizing the defunding of the World Health Organization. According to the New York Times, anti-vaxxers, members of QAnon and right-wing pundits have seized on a video of a 2015 TED Talk given by Gates, where he discussed the Ebola outbreak and warned of a new pandemic, to bolster their claims he had foreknowledge of the COVID pandemic or even purposely caused it. A recent variant of this conspiracy theory, particularly beloved by anti-vaccination activists, is the idea that COVID is part of a dastardly Gates-led plot to vaccinate the world's population. There is some truth in this, of course, vaccinating much of the world's population may well be the only way to avoid an eventual death toll in the tens of millions. But anti-vaxxers don't believe vaccines work. Instead some have spread the myth that Gates wants to use a vaccination program to implant digital microchips that will somehow track and control people. The spread of misinformation has meant that ID2020, a small non-profit that focuses on establishing digital IDs for poorer people around the world, has had to call in the FBI. The Cornell Alliance for Science is partly funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Number 4. The virus escaped from a Chinese lab. This one at least has the benefit of being plausible. It is true that the original epicenter of the epidemic, the Chinese city of Wuhan, also hosts a virology institute where researchers have been studying bat coronaviruses for a long time. One of these researchers, Shi Zhengli, a prominent virologist who spent years collecting bad dung samples in caves and was a lead expert on the earlier SARS outbreak, was sufficiently concerned about the prospect that she spent days frantically checking lab records to see if anything had gone wrong. 
She admits breathing a sigh of relief when genetic sequencing showed that the new SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus did not match any of the viruses sampled and studied in the Wuhan Institute of Virology by her team. However, the sheer coincidence of China's lead institute studying bat coronaviruses being in the same city as the origin of the COVID outbreak has proven too juicy for conspiracists to resist. The idea was seeded originally via a slick hour-long documentary produced by the Epic Times, an English-language news outlet based in the United States with links to the Falun Gong religious cult that has long been persecuted by the Chinese Communist Party CCP. The Epic Times insists on calling COVID, the CCP virus, in all its coverage. The theory has now tipped into the mainstream, being reported in the Washington Post, The Times, UK, and many other outlets. Number 5. COVID was created as a biological weapon. A spicier variant is that COVID not only escaped from a lab, but it was intentionally created by Chinese scientists as a biowarfare weapon. According to Pew Research, nearly 3 in 10 Americans believe that COVID-19 was made in a lab, either intentionally or accidentally. The former is more popular, specifically, 23% believe it was developed intentionally, with only 6% believing it was an accident. This theory that the Chinese somehow created the virus is particularly popular on the U.S. political right. It gained mainstream coverage thanks to U.S. Sen. Tom Cotton, Republican, Arkansas, who amplified theories first aired in the Washington Examiner, a highly conservative media outlet, that the Wuhan Institute of Virology, is linked to Beijing's covert bio-weapons program. This theory can be easily debunked now that there is unambiguous scientific evidence, thanks to genetic sequencing, that the SARS-CoV-2 virus has entirely natural origins as a zoonotic virus originating in bats. The Examiner has since added a correction at the top of the original piece admitting the story is probably false. Number 6. The U.S. military imported COVID into China. The Chinese government responded to the anti-China theories with a conspiracy theory of its own that seeks to turn blame back around onto the United States. This idea was spread initially by Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian, who tweeted, it's possible that the U.S. military brought the virus to Wuhan. These comments, according to Voice of American News, echoed a rumored conspiracy, widely circulated in China, that U.S. military personnel had brought the virus to China during their participation in the 2019 Military World Games in Wuhan last October. For China, as The Atlantic reported, this conspiracy theory, and an accompanying attempt to rename COVID the USA virus, was a transparent, geopolitical ploy, useful for domestic propaganda but not widely believed internationally. Number 7. GMOs are somehow to blame. Genetically modified crops have been a target of conspiracy theorists for years, so it was hardly a surprise to see GMOs blamed in the early stages of the COVID pandemic. In early March, Italian attorney Francesco Billota penned a bizarre article for Il Manifesto, falsely claiming that GM crops cause genetic pollution that allows viruses to proliferate due to the resulting environmental imbalance. Anti-GMO activists have also tried to blame modern agriculture, which is strange, since the known path of the virus into the human population, as with Ebola, HIV and many others, was through the very ancient practice of people capturing and killing wildlife. Ironically, GMOs will almost certainly be part of any vaccine solution. If any of the ongoing 70 vaccine projects work, which is a big if, that would be pretty much the only guaranteed way the world can get out of the COVID mess. Vaccines could be based on either GM attenuated viruses or use antigens produced in GM insect cell lines or plants. If GMOs do help save the world from the curse of COVID, maybe they'll stop being a dirty word. Number 8. COVID-19 doesn't actually exist. According to professional conspiracy theorists like David Icke and Infowars' Alex Jones, COVID-19 doesn't actually exist, but is a plot by the globalist elite to take away our freedoms. Early weaker versions of this theory were prevalent on the political right in the notion that the novel coronavirus would be, no worse than flu, and later versions are now influencing anti-lockdown protests across several states in the U.S. Because believers increasingly refuse to observe social distancing measures, they could directly help to spread the epidemic further in their localities and increase the resulting death rate. The pandemic is being manipulated by the deep state. Some believe that a deep state of America's elite is plotting to undermine the president, and that Dr. Anthony Fossey, the face of the U.S. coronavirus pandemic response, is a secret member. Fossey's expression of disbelief when the deep state was mentioned during a press briefing supposedly gave the game away. Number 9. COVID is a plot by big pharmaceutical industries. Many conspiracy theory promoters are in reality clever actors trying to sell quack products. Alex Jones, between rants about hoaxes and the New World Order, urges viewers to buy expensive miracle pills that he claims can cure all known diseases. 
Dr. Mercola, a quack anti-vax and anti-GMO medic who has been banned from Google due to peddling misinformation, claims that vitamins, and numerous other products he sells, can cure or prevent COVID. Natural News, another conspiracist site, sells all manner of pills, potions and prepper gear. These conspiracists depend for their market on getting people to believe that evidence-based, i.e. conventional, medicine doesn't work and is a plot by big pharmaceutical companies to make us ill. Big pharma conspiracies are a staple of anti-vaccination narratives, so it is hardly surprising that they have transmuted into the age of the coronavirus. Number 10. COVID death rates are inflated. Another far-right meme is the idea that COVID death rates are being inflated and therefore there is no reason to observe lockdown regulations or other social distancing measures. There has been speculations that the government of some countries are inflating COVID-19 cases, to create fear to the masses and achieve their selfish goals by. In order to judiciously extort funds from, World Health Organization, United Nation, non-governmental organizations, wealthy citizens etc. and prominent in promoting this myth is Dr. Ani Bukacek, whose speech warning that COVID death certificates are being manipulated has been viewed more than a quarter of a million times on YouTube. Bukacek appears in a white lab coat and with a stethoscope around her neck, making her look like an authoritative medical source. Dig a little deeper, however, as Rolling Stone magazine did, and it turns out she's actually a far-right anti-vaccination and anti-abortion activist, previously noted for bringing tiny plastic fetuses into the Montana state legislature. Her insistence that COVID death rates are inflated has, of course, no basis in fact. More likely the current death toll is a serious undercount. Thank you for watching my video, feel free to to like comment and share and please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on your post notifications. Till next time, bye.